Hi there. I thought that we might do a video on, actually several videos, on the Cray J98 that I have. Uh, I sort of wasn't planning on working on this one next, but I have been contacted by a couple of people that has brought this to the top of my list. Uh, and while I have motivation and impetus, I thought that I would try and track it down. This is probably going to be a long-term one because I'm not sure how long it's going to be before I can get all of the pieces in place and get stuff figured out and working. Uh, again, while I have motivation and you know what my motivation is like, but we're going to try. So, this is a Cray J98. Actually, it's a J916 but a couple of the processor boards were half-inched, so it only has two processor boards, four processors per board. It is a J98. It's a J90 series. There was the J98, the 916, and the 932. The 90 is made up of a single processing cabinet, and then one or more iOS cabinets. The maximum configuration for a uh, 90 is four cabinets, three iOS cabinets, and one processing cabinet. This machine came from a friend of mine whom I got the big 6800s from, and it's sort of a long-term loan. He has a working J90, I think it's a 916, and this was not working or is not working currently, but most of the parts should be there, so, in theory, if I can get some of the missing pieces, we should be good to go. Now, I said that I've made a couple new friends lately. One of them's a chap um, by the name of Jim. Hi, Jim. And Jim has a collection of Crays. It, computers in general, Crays, SGIs, Suns. Uh, but his collection of Crays, he has more Crays than you can count on all fingers and toes. So that's pretty exciting. He's a really nice guy. And Jim sent me a whole bunch of manuals. And that's the big thing that I've been missing is documentation. What I was hoping to do with these videos is show you what I've got. We can focus on each of the cabinets, the front end, uh, how the system actually works being an honest-to-God, real Cray supercomputer a vector processing supercomputer unlike the E10K which is a whole bunch of regular microprocessors in one system. This is a real vector processor supercomputer. It operates a little differently, uh, although quite a lot like the E10K since they were made by the same people, but I digress. What would be really nice is if there are people out there who are familiar with these machines, people who built them, field engineers who serviced them, somebody who's had one and might have things left over. Any information that you guys can help dig up will be great. I have a machine. I have a bunch of documentation. I have Dave's recollection on how it should work. I have Jim's recollection on how his work. And that's about it. The rest of it I am figuring out as I go. And for a lot of machines, that's not too hard. But this has so many pieces that it's going to be an adventure. And I thought that I would bring you guys along for the ride. My videos lately have been getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, so 20 minutes, 30 minutes, to cover just the introduction and all of the bits and pieces for this system is going to be like an hour long video, so I'm going to try and break it up into smaller chunks. So this is just the introduction, and I'm not going to get too detailed in here, I will whet your appetites, hopefully you're interested, maybe you could give a rat's ass, I don't know. And tell you what I've got, what I need, and... In the upcoming weeks, I will release a video and you guys can see each part as we go. So, we have our two cabinets. What I'm missing right now is the SWS, the Sun Workstation. Like the E10K, the machine requires a front end to bring it up. It does have internal disks, but the internal disks, while they do 
have Unicos, the Unix-like Cray operating system, it is not actually self-bootable. It requires the Sun workstation to get it fired up. I do not have that Spark Station 5 Sun workstation. I do, however, have other suns. So I'm hoping, based on the information that I have already, that I should be able to cobble things together and get it working. What I'm looking for. Like I said, anybody who has any information, you know, somebody who used to put these things together, install them or deinstall them, I'd love to hear from you. I'd really like to build up a list of resources, so if I have any questions, I can ask. I have a long list of things that I need to know about this. Um, first and foremost is software install, cabling, things like that, and I'll go into more detail on those in the future. Anybody with manuals that they're willing to share or loan me so that I can scan and return them, um, I am definitely all ears. Hardware documentation is the big thing that I'm missing. Jim sent me a bunch of uh, install manuals and software install manuals and things like that, which have been gold and have filled a huge number of gaps. But I'm missing basic hardware information. And so a lot of it is either from documentation that isn't explicitly about what I'm interested in, or it's recollection from my friends, or um, Google research, things like that. For as exciting as a Cray is, I mean, let's be honest, it is the coolest computer of every computer ever made is going to be a Cray. It always is going to be a Cray. Um, you know, and that's not to say that there have not been some magnificent machines. The big CDC series, the 6600, which of course is a Seymour Cray system, uh, Convex, the Intel Paragons, the IBM SP2s, things like that are all really exciting systems. The Sunny 15,000. But the Cray name holds such gravitas that um, I'm really excited to get started. And my kids are screaming outside, so I should probably cut this off and go figure out if somebody's missed a limb or something like that. I think they were playing golf. I hope that means one of them didn't whack the other with a golf club. That'd be great. Anyway, I digress. So, this is the beginning. This is where we'll start. I am going to pre-record a bunch of videos and try and get them out with some regularity. I am going to New Zealand in a couple of weeks' time, so I will be missing. I'm going to try and release while I'm gone. We will see how that works. But if I go missing for a few weeks, know that it's not because I've lost interest. It's because I am out of the country. If you have any information, post in the comment section. If you want to send me a PM, that'd be great. Um, my contact information, I believe, is on the geekpalace.info website. If you want me, you should be able to find me. I am really looking forward to this one, and I hope you guys are too. If you have been, thank you very much for watching. Hope you guys have a good day.